Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Boogie2998, and he is a Magic fan. I think, before we begin, that this is the type of person who has shown, without sponsorship, that they actually enjoy playing Magic the Gathering. And I don't understand why he's not invited to Mythic Invitationals. I'm not sure why he's not invited as a Magic celebrity of some type because he has 4.5 million subscribers. Now, one of the interesting parts about uh, this conversation that he's having about Magic Fest, that is very illogical what Magic Fest uh, coverage has become because imagine one Rudy individual can get months and months and even years of content from going to one Magic Fest. So are you saying that we have all this great content available, but no one's covering it. And the reason they're not covering it is, I believe, due to saving money. Um, this seems kind of paradoxical when you have a very big, expensive event and there's no coverage. Now, you might say there's no coverage from Magic side because why would there be? There's no coverage from Channel Fireball, who runs all the Magic Fest, who have a monopoly on it. Boogie makes some really good points. Um, one of the most valid points is it doesn't, like, if you want to promote Magic as a professional event or even to casual players from the stance of you need to see more Magic, which would be helpful, and you have a event that is very helpful all the time, why wouldn't you cover your own events? Uh, it's very strange that a Rudy Alpha Investment character who is, let's just be honest, a guy with a camera at an event can do a better job than all the paid sponsorships, including uh, Tolarian Community College, who does get paid to go to the events. And he will argue, oh, I just, the airplane ticket's not payment. This is not payment. I mean, for tax reasons, Tolarian, it is payment. I hope that you're reporting these on your taxes. And the mana source, right? The mana source uh, who has been paid to go to many events like the GP Las Vegas Magic Fest, where then he asked for 90000 actually asked for $150,000 of donations due to the injury occurring at this Magic Fest that he was invited to go to. And look at these tokens. These tokens talk about the coverage and how awesome the uh, coverage of these events will be. So it's false promise after false promise, but really they're just hurting themselves. They're not hurting like anyone else. Like they're just hurting their, themselves and their brand. Here is Richard Hogan, Hagen, who covers it. PSA, everyone who works coverage at a event is a freelance contractor. We work when and where we are asked to work and love to bring you coverage whenever we can, just as much as you like to watch it and read it. Uh, there's a lot of reading going on right now because there's not that many watching. So I would always say that Boogie is kind of outside our community. He is obviously interested in magic, has been for a long time. As you can see from his channel, he may... He, it's been opening packs for some time. Uh, he, he even had a uh, sponsorship with uh, Unsleeve Media <laughs> way back when, uh, when Unsleeve Media was covering Magic more. But uh, it is fascinating when I think about all the changes that has happened since that time. To refocus on this issue, it's how you treat people. You're treating people extremely poorly. You treat the artists extremely poorly. The artists are not going to show up anymore unless they're making money, which means that they're the big artist. And the ecosystem itself is uh, damaged because if a, the most artists do just decide not to go, then you are looking at less artists going and then less people going because of the artists because there's less of them in one spot that you can get your cards autographed. Or you can buy prints and things of that nature. The same goes for Magic Fest. Uh, less people are going to want to go to Magic Fest if you know, less people are going to want to go to Magic Fest if there's less coverage of Magic Fest and people don't know when it is. Or I think just Magic Fest London came out its pre-release date. So you have the choice of going to a 
Magic Fest, which is a big event, or going to your local game store pre-release. Again, terrible planning. Uh, very, very... Um, it's things that don't make sense from a business standpoint, and they don't make sense from if Boogie, who's outside the community, he doesn't make Magic videos that often, under, if he looks inside and he sees... Magic Fest, Magic Gathering no longer covering their own events, Grand Prix slash Magic Fest. If someone from the outside can see what's going on and we make comments like he made on this video, and check out the video if you haven't already, then imagine the people inside. The, the, the Magic employees, the actual employees, not the 1099 contractors. So let me um, say that I've never seen a company really just do 1099s like this. Like everyone's a 1099. Like everyone's a 1099. Magic Pros are 1099s. Um, the cosplayers, if they pay them at all, are 1099s. The judges are 1099s. I mean, the whole event is a bunch of vendors. I mean, it's it's fascinating that Wizard of the Coast has enforcement policies on the stores that are WPN yet. They don't take responsibility. In legal language, it's like, hey, I'm going to act like your boss, but I'm going to pay you like I'm not, and therefore I will save taxes. Again, I'm sure that there are corporate loopholes that make this possible, where you can hire people and you can treat them as employees and actually just uh, pay them as 1099s to save on taxes. But it's a bad taste because these people don't have health care. These people don't have any. It's not the fact they don't have health care. It's the fact they will never have health care as a 1099. They won't have 401k. They won't have savings. These are people who are doing it because they love the game. Otherwise, it's a terrible job. Um, so I'm going to remark a little bit about local game stores um, now that I own a local game store. I'm shutting down the magic part. It's just not profitable. I'm probably gonna make a longer video uh, outlining you know, some of the troubles that a local game store has. And it's not just me, right? It's everyone near me. So I'll, Battle Bunker went belly up two to three years ago and that was a store that was half magic. And then it was uh, half uh, computer games, like League of Legends was the other half, and you would pay per hour to play those computer games. So maybe you might make the argument, okay, well, the Magic side could have survived, but I don't think it would have. Um, the person who was operating the Magic side, his name was Sam. Good guy. Didn't know him very well. Store didn't last very long under his uh, guidance, if you will. The other store would be Swords and Superheroes in Kingwood. That one actually was the store. <laughs> I mean, it just made every excuse under the sun of why. They, they were the store that sold all their pr promotions, uh, promos. Any promo they got, it would be on eBay the next day. <laughs> so eventually, you know, the player base got angry and then they left. And then DNA Comics, which used to have 120, 150 people at pre-release. Um, 40, 50 people at FNM, every single FNM, um, and now it has zero, and the owner has decided not to do magic and not to be a WPN store by choice. So, and then there's like many places in the mall. There, were, there was three different places in the mall that did a combination of Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Magic the Gathering. Uh, so they've all gone belly up as well. The point I'm trying to make is Magic is not in a really good state. Um, a lot of people say, oh, this is the best Magic has ever been. You know, I've gone to this game store and it's 100 um, bikini models playing Magic all the time. And wow, look at all those female Magic players and awesome. And look at all this cosplay going on in my Magic f and I'm not seeing it. <laughs> I played Magic for a long time. I played Magic in New York City, uh, Exton, Pennsylvania. Williamsburg, Virginia, Florida, San Francisco. I've played San, San Francisco was uh, just the packs were like, they tried to sell $5.99 packs. Well, rent is expensive, mind you. And I played in Houston. And this is, in my opinion, MTG Arena is going to replace Paper Magic, mainly because um, it has very low overhead for everybody. So when Magic 
sells you a digital pack, just like Pokemon or any other online game, it costs nothing for that to make. It costs fractions of a penny to produce the memory that it would take to save that in your collection. Fractions of like a fraction. And why wouldn't they continue with that model? They don't need to deal with store owners who may or may not be predators. Not the kind, not the uh, predators from Lion King, the other predators. And man, it's just very bad. So Boogie 2988 is 2998 or 2988 is a outsider looking in for a game that he has enjoyed and he does like. And I bet you he questions, hey, made for MTG has less than 10,000 followers on Twitter and she doesn't see streams less than 33 hours of MTG arena and she doesn't have a YouTube channel and she doesn't have this and that and that and this. Why wouldn't you invite me to your event? Because I'm sure if they've invited him to a mythic invitational for MTG arena, he would go. And I'm sure that the 4.5 million subscribers would enjoy a vlog or something like that. And he's a good content creator. The same an the same question is why wouldn't you invite Rudy to an event when you know he's going to cover the event? Like, we still don't know if he has more GP Vegas. <laughs> like, he has what a hundred plus videos on that, and each video gets fifty. Some videos have like gone over half a million views on his GP Vegas adventures. And not only is he creating content, but content other content creators are creating content with him. So when you assume like all the content that's being created from this one individual going, why would you want this individual? Why would you stop this individual from going? Why wouldn't you pay? If you paid Rudy for a flight and a plane ticket and gave him some stipend, exactly what you did for Tolarian, exactly what you did for Demanosaurus, who unfortunately had no coverage because he had medical uh, emergency, which the Magic community covered at the time. Wouldn't you get more content? Wouldn't you get more press? Wouldn't you get everything that a marketing department will look at? Uh, impressions, views, um, imprints, you know, like how many people remember, you know, and then the consistent content. That's one event that Rudy went to. And Rudy's been on record for saying he's not going to any more GPs because he feels that they are blacklisting him or they have kind of isolated him. I mean, when you do this to your customers like Unsleeve Media, like Jeff Hoagland, Hoogland, who couldn't be more different from Unsleeve Media. They fight pretty often. They used to fight very often. Then, I mean, what are you really saying to your player base? Like... Hey, let's reward people who are lazy, people who need to ask for Patreon and donations. And let's, let's you know, these hard... So I, it's not the fact that I have an issue with Tolarian or the Mana Source being content creators. I just think that they are not a positive expected value. So I think if you sent, Tolar if you sent Tolarian and Wedge, they couldn't beat out Rudy and Boogie. Like, this is just facts. It's data. So more people would show up for those two than Tolarian Weds. And on top of that, the content that would be created. So when is the last time Tolarian Community College, out of all these Magic Fests, that he has a vlog? He doesn't. He doesn't do that. Rudy does hundreds of vlogs. So from a marketing perspective, everything being equal and actually viewership on Alpha Investments being higher than Tolarian Community College per video, when it... We as a marketing department say, let, yeah, let's go with the guy. Politics aside, that the only reason I could see them not doing this is because there's favorism, there is elitism, and they don't think Rudy is good enough. And Rudy, that's the feeling he gets too because he has said no more. No more Magic Fest. If I would channel Fireball, I would just go up to Rudy and Boogie and say, hey, whatever you guys need, I want you guys at this event. You know, uh, Channel Fireball, they're not dumb. The marketing department is not dumb. Remember they posted uh, advertisements of Wedge being at like a GP a month after he was injured? A month after he collected all his donations, Channel Fireball posted a Facebook ad saying that Wedge is going to be at this very big event. And they were promoting him very heavily. I still have a screenshot. In one of my videos, I have a screenshot of that 
ad. And it's embarrassing. Um, it is embarrassing because from a, as a digital marketer, they are openly choosing worse marketing avenues, less impressions, less views, less revenue, less everything, less interest because of how they feel about individuals. And that's eventually going to bite them in the ass. Oh, also, please subscribe to my other channel because uh, I'm... I'm going to make another video, but it's really important that I build up my other channel. I'm kind of being bullied by the marketers in my area, so I need to create this other channel so I can fight back, i.e. become you know, the lion of the Houston digital marketing. Um, simply put, they don't put me on the list of 100 top social media people. And I should be on this list as top 10, but the reason they don't is because they don't like who I am. And I need to, so I have the biggest LinkedIn by far, by 10 times factor. And I need to become the biggest YouTuber in digital marketing in Houston so then I can rub it in their faces. <laughs> Pretty logical. Bye.